guys, Retro Gaming Maniac here, and in today's video I wanted to go over some of the Super Nintendo ports that I have in my collection. Now, as far as Super Nintendo games go, I probably have close to 100 Super Nintendo games. Some of them are boxed, but most of them are loose. Um, and the only, um, the only Super Nintendo uh, import games that I have are ones that just really interest me. Um, now, I don't have a Japanese Super Nintendo to play these, but most Super Nintendos, um, all you gotta do is remove a tab down by the cartridge slot. You can just break it off if you want. And you can play uh, Super Nintendo import games. So there's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to do that if that's something you're interested in doing so you don't have to go out and purchase a Japanese you know, Super Nintendo. But um, I also have a Retron 5 that'll play Super Nintendo and um, import Super Nintendo games, Japanese games. So. Anyways, I just wanted to show you the games I have. I don't have very many. I have probably eight, but uh, and a lot of them are from a certain genre that I'm a huge fan of, uh, Dragon Ball Z. So, and so you probably know what games I'm going to show you. But so it's very interesting to me to see how different countries have like different cartridge designs. So, like for instance, this is a standard Super Nintendo game from the U.S. Uh, that is Home Improvement, which is actually surprisingly a good game, and I believe it's actually getting hard to find. And here is a Japanese Super Nintendo game. And look at the shapes here. The one's, one's kind of got more of a modern look. I think this one looks a little more modern. It's a little more rounded. Um, it's got like a cool ribbing on the side there, kind of like a vent or something. I don't know, it's pretty cool looking. But anyways, let's go ahead and go over some of the games that I have in my collection. So I'm just gonna talk about them and tell you why I like them. So, first up is Dragon Ball Z Super Butadin. I hope I'm saying that right, but this is a side-scrolling fighting game, a lot like Street Fighter. Um, and back when I was a kid, I was watching Dragon Ball Z, and I love that show. But there was no, um, there's no video games in the U.S. All right, guys. So I was editing the video, and I realized I made a mistake. And there was actually a Dragon Ball game released in the U.S. that I could have played if I wanted to. Um, except I think it's probably a good thing I didn't. <laughs> this game kind of sucks. It's called Dragon Power. And, yeah, instead of being called Dragon Ball, it's called Dragon Power. It was made by Bandai, um, 1987. And basically, Bandai made a Dragon Ball game, released it in Japan, and it was fine. And they decided to release it in the U.S. to a market um, that had no exposure <laughs> to Dragon Ball. And they changed a lot of things. Like, the characters are there, you'll recognize them. Their names are different. Like, Bulma's name is Nora. Um, I forgot what Master Roshi's name is. Uh, the Dragon Balls are called Crystal Balls. It's very weird. The the story makes no sense. The gameplay is pretty typical for NES, um, you know, action game. But um, yeah, Dragon Power. That's I mean that should tell you everything you need to know. Look at that. But anyways, check out the gameplay and you'll see why it's probably a good thing I didn't bother with this game. And that was one thing I always wanted. And I was looking at um, I was looking at video game magazines and seeing the commercials on TV. I saw this, um, used to be this game store where I lived called Swap USA. And they used to show gameplay footage of this game and a few other games. And they had like video games and Japanese games and they had like all these adapters so you could play import games and how oh, I used to blow my mind. But in the US there was no Dragon Ball Z games released. So in Japan there's plenty, but Super Butchiden is a pretty cool Super Nintendo um, fighting game in the style of Street Fighter, which is like perfect for the Dragon Ball Z style of game. Um, it has some pretty interesting things that you can do in it. I'll play. I'll put some uh, gameplay up, but um, yeah, there's actually three in the series as far as the Super Nintendo goes to my knowledge. So next up, we've got Dragon Ball Z Super Butchiden 2, and each one kind of improved on certain game mechanics. I would say the graphics largely remain the same, but um, some of the gameplay elements were different. Like, uh, I believe you could actually separate to like the far boundaries of the level, and it would, your screen would go split screen. So, you know, your, your you know, second player would be way over here, and then first player would be over here. So if you do like a Kamehameha, then he has time um, to avoid it and block it and stuff. It was really cool. Um, next up, Dragon Ball Z Super Butchiden 3. Um, this one is really cool. I don't care for the um, the art on this one as much, just because it's Majin Buu and Trunks and Goten. It's just kind of 
not as cool as the other ones, but it's cool that there's three games in this series. Uh, next one up, now this one I always thought had like the sickest um, art style, and I saw this one in um, Game Informer, I think, and a bunch of other maybe PlayStation magazines when they were looking over imports, and I always wanted to play this game. This was one of the games on the Swap USA commercial, and that is Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension. Hopefully you can see that. But um, there wasn't very many characters to choose from, but the art style, it was just very, it was like Dragon Ball Z on steroids. It was very dark, and um, the art style looked a lot like, I don't know, now this may age me a little bit, but back in the day I would get on uh, DragonBallZ.com with dial-up internet and uh, go to their website, and uh, sometimes they would have fan art posted. And uh, some of the fan art was like, Super Saiyan, you know, 10, Goku, and Super it was pretty crazy stuff, ridiculous stuff. And the art style looked kind of like some of the drawings like that, that were really good, just really outlandish, like, Vegeta's like super buff, and it's like really dark and gritty. Really cool though. Um, good fighting game too. Um, so it's Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension. Next up, I got this one. Uh, my wife was a big fan of this series, and, um, we wanted to play a game, a retro game in that series, so we got this one. And I wasn't aware that this actually had a US release, but that is Sailor Moon on the Super Nintendo. And this one is a side-scrolling beat-em-up in the style of Final Fight or Streets of Rage. It's actually pretty fun. And it's not a great game. I would say it's kind of an average game, but it does have two-player co-op, and it is pretty fun, and if you're a fan, of anime or Sailor Moon, um, it, it makes for you know a good time. They did a really good job with the um, the art and, and uh, everything in the game just looks accurate to the show. So that's uh, Sailor Moon. I think it's a you know cool game to have. Not a huge fan myself, but uh, next one up is now this one is called Area 88 and it's a really good shooter. Uh, in the U.S. it's called UN Squadron, but this is. Capcom's Area 88. Hopefully you can see that. There it is. And this is just a side-scrolling um, shooter, kind of like, um, what's another shooter? Any other, you know, shooter, side-scrolling shooter. Um, man, I can't, I'm drawing a blank. What's a good shooter here? Life Force. That's, that's a good example on the NES. <laughs> but anyways, this is a side-scrolling shooter called Area 88 in Japan. In the U.S. it's called UN Squadron. It's a great game. Um, I don't know if the US version is hard to get or if it's expensive, but I really like the art style on this one. It's got a very anime feel to it. Um, and that's something I really like about these imports, is just the art is amazing. Next up, I don't remember where I got this one. And I'm not a huge fan of Bomberman, but this is Super Bomberman 2. Um, I wish I could remember where I got this. I, I just don't remember. Spy Hudson Soft. It's a fun game if you like Bomberman. I'm just not a huge Bomberman fan. Um, I played the original NES and that's my favorite one. I do know there's some good Bomberman games though. Um, they make for good party games if you're, you know, fighting each other and stuff. But. Next one up. Now this one I got at a game store for $7. And for that price I had to get it. And that is Street Fighter 2. And this one actually is complete in box to my knowledge. Um, but as you can tell, it looks a lot like a VHS box. In fact, if I had a VHS tape, hold on one second. This is a VHS tape for those of you who were born and you know after 2000. <laughs> VHS tape, um, and look at the similarities. I mean, that's pretty much a VHS tape um, box, same size and everything. But that's you know pretty cool. Well, let's go ahead and open it up real quick. And just in case you haven't seen a Super Nintendo box, this is the American Super Nintendo. Well, I'm getting really close to the camera. This is the American Super Nintendo box. It's a little wider, a little thicker, but not as tall. So, very different. And it's cool to see what different countries have, you know, as far as their designs and this stuff. But let's go ahead and open this up real quick. I think the packaging on the um, Japanese games are so much better. So, it's empty. You pull it out, you have this tray, and it has a very colorful manual here. 
awesome. Look at that. That is just really cool. And now the <laughs> the label on this Japanese version is kind of lame to me compared to the U.S. version. But Street Fighter 2 just got some of, kind of a you know some guy hiding in the shadows. It's kind of lame if you ask me. But the booklet I think is what makes this so cool. And it's just very nice. And it's a full color manual. Oops. Very cool stuff. Now I can't read Japanese, so I can't tell you anything about this, but look at that's funny. Oh, there's some cool art right there. Hello. There you go. Character um, special moves, I guess. Gives you their stats. Very cool stuff. Here's the back. Capcom. Whoop, almost dropped it. Who is that? I don't know who that is. Is that Chun-Li? Yes, Chun-Li. But anyways, guys, that is my, <laughs> that is my Super Nintendo uh, import collection. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. I don't have very many. I wouldn't mind getting some more. And with the Retron 5, you can actually download um, language packs to SD card. And whenever you're um, playing the game, it'll, you know, certain games, you can actually convert everything from Japanese to English with that download. So it makes a lot of these games playable that otherwise, you know, if they're RPGs, it would be really difficult to play. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one. So we'll see you later. Thanks.